the data set you downloaded in the previous tutorial uses the flanker task, which is designed to tap into a mental ability known as cognitive control. For this course, we're going to define cognitive control as the ability to ignore irrelevant thoughts or stimuli in order to do a task correctly. To take a common, real-world example, let's say that you take a trip to the United Kingdom for a passionate, romantic, and super quick rendezvous with your English lover. If you're from a normal country, like the United States, you're used to driving on the right side of the road. But when you arrive in London, you have to drive on the left side of the road. Doing so requires that you override your habit of driving on the right, and keeping these new rules in mind demands both attention and effort. So how can we elicit a similar cognitive state in the laboratory? One popular experiment is called the flanker task. In the flanker task, the subject sees a line of arrows pointing either to the left or to the right, and is then instructed to press a button indicating the direction of the arrow in the middle. If the middle arrow is pointing to the left, they press the left button. If it's pointing to the right, they press the right button. The middle arrow is flanked by other arrows, which either point in the same direction as the middle arrow or point in the opposite direction from the middle arrow, hence the name flanker task. You can imagine that the task is easier if the central arrow points in the same direction as the flanking arrow, and more difficult if it points in the opposite direction, because in that case, we have to make an extra effort to ignore the flanking arrows. We'll call the former condition the congruent condition and the latter the incongruent condition. Subjects are typically slower to respond and less accurate in the incongruent condition, and both faster and more accurate in the congruent condition. Since many experiments have shown that the difference in reaction times is robust and reliable, it follows that in our fMRI data, we should see a corresponding difference in brain activity as well. The cognitive control regions of the brain, such as the dorsomedial prefrontal cortex, should be more active during the incongruent condition relative to the congruent condition. Our goal is to estimate the magnitude of the brain activity to each condition, and then contrast the two in order to see whether they are significantly different from each other. This description of the task brings up an important point about good practice for designing fMRI studies. If you can design a behavioral task that produces a strong and reliable effect, you will increase your odds of finding an effect in your imaging data. fMRI data is notoriously noisy. If you don't see a behavioral effect in your study, you most likely will not find an effect in your imaging data either. Let's finish with an illustration of the flanker task for this study, adapted from Kelly et al. 2008. The subject is shown a fixation cross to focus his attention on the center of the screen, and then either a congruent or incongruent flanker trial is presented for 2,000 milliseconds. During the trial, the subject presses either the left or the right button. Note that because this is an fMRI study, the timing of the experiment will be different than in a behavioral experiment. The most important difference is the use of jitters, or intervals of different lengths to separate each presentation of a flanker trial. This is necessary in order to estimate the bold response or brain activity for each condition. Later on, we'll learn how to create timing files indicating when each trial occurred relative to the beginning of the experiment. But first, let's take a look at this imaging data using the AFNI image viewer. Cheerio, mates.